Hi, I'm Monty McKinnon. Thank you for joining me today. This channel is about building acoustic guitars and we have two things to do today. The first thing I want to show you is we've already started the finishing phase. I showed you the front on a previous video. This is what the back is looking like. You can kind of see that. I think you can get the idea. There's the, the side. Haven't done the sides yet, but we've done this, so we're going to be working on that later today. But now it's time for tea with Monty. The first question is from me to you. And here's my question to you. What do you think is better, a factory-made guitar or a custom-made guitar? In the comments below, would you give me your response to that question and tell me why you think a factory-built guitar is better than a custom or a custom is better than a factory-built? I'd really be interested in hearing that. I am going to do a vlog on that shortly, but I would really like to know what you think on that. That's the first question. All right, on to the next one. Patrick, you ask, what are my go-to guitar strings? Well, they're D'Addario light gauge. I don't use a heavy gauge because the bracing is not such and so substantial in this guitar or the other guitars that I make that it would take the heavy gauge. It's, it's just too strong and it would destroy the guitar. So I go with the light gauge D'Addario. I have used Martin and I don't get into the the fancy coated strings, uh, I don't know, I guess they're okay, but it depends on your hands whether they're oily or not, but that's what I've been using. Lee, you wanted to know about a rare guitar you have. I think you said it was uh, the lead guitarist for Nazareth that owned the guitar before you, and you opened it up, and it was all cracked. The finish on that guitar was all cracked. Um, that is usually due to extreme heat and cold, and and going back and forth and it gets brittle and it cracks. It could be caused by other things too, like humidity. I don't know about repairing it. I've never had to repair one of those or tried that. The first thing that came to mind was, why don't you contact Stumac uh, in Ohio and ask them if they could refinish your guitar for you and preserve the, the uh, painting and, and the motif or whatever it is you have underneath that finish and see if they could do that. They, they just may have a, a fix for that. I don't know. You also asked me about how long it's taking to do this. Is it caused by the filming? The answer to that is yes. And also, in addition, the editing. It takes me quite a while to edit. I've had to learn all this software as well as do the camera work run in front of the camera and as you know I've made lots of mistakes and then remember all the the set the the measurements and and where everything goes in the guitar and at my age that's a bit daunting so yeah that's why it's taken so long who is the most famous guitar player you want to know this is Lee asking this again that is about that has one of my guitars the most famous person I know that has one of my guitars would be Peter I, I don't know anybody else that, uh, no, no famous touring people that, that I know of are playing any of my guitars. So uh, that'll have to be. Now you asked about Peter in a video that he did where he's sitting on the floor in his office and he's playing on, on a guitar. That's a Tom DeLonge guitar. I did not make that guitar, but I did clean it up for him and take off all the parts and polish them and, and get it back in shape and lower the action and all of that. So I did do that, but that's it's a Tom DeLonge guitar. Gary from Tennessee is asking about a pre-made neck and building the body around the neck. Now, I assume you're talking about an electric guitar. Uh, it, it would be very difficult in an acoustic, perhaps, to do that, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. Now, you might, instead of just buying the neck, consider buying a kit where you get the body and everything else and then kind of reshape the body. You've got all the, the parts of the body uh, drilled through for where the, the wiring will go and where all the pots will go and everything else. So what you would have to do at that point is is simply kind of do a, a little refigure, reshape on the guitar. So why don't you think about doing something like that? It's pretty difficult. David V, my friend, you ask, 
Where do I source my wood? Well, I, I get my wood, David, from a number of places. I get it from LMI on occasion. I get it from Stumac on occasion. I go to uh, Burlington, Ontario, and I get it from uh, Exotic Wood, and I believe they ship. I also get it from A&M Wood Lovers in Cambridge, which is uh, in Ontario, and they will ship as well. I also go to the Century Mill in Stouffville, and I've picked up wood there as well. Uh, I have a few private sources that have given me some tops and some uh, sets. The Brazilian rosewood here is from a private source, and I believe this was somebody's buffet back in the day, because you can't import this stuff because of the CITES agreement and arrangement. Also, David, you want to know um, if I'm building any other guitars as I build this. At the present time, because of the filming of this and wanting to show you the different aspects and talk about it, the answer is no. I haven't done any others. I have built f about four at one time, five at one time, where I do five necks or four necks and five bodies and all that. I found that to be a bit daunting because it doesn't take too long before you... Which neck this goes with what body was that again and and you can get that all mixed up so i i tend not to do that one how many guitars you want to know could i build in a year uh, 10 to 12 maybe 15 i don't do that because i this is not a full-time business this is a hobby and it's it's something that i hope that people will be inspired that watch this channel and want to pick up their guitar and a play it b make a guitar buy a kit and assemble it and put it together and have their own guitar because they can do that so i'm trying to encourage other individuals and that's what this is about not a business mike who is a neighbor of jim miller now jim you will recall was in a previous uh, episode where we featured his workshop and so Mike is one of his neighbors and he wants to know what kind of a finish I'm doing. This is the French polish, okay? And I've got about three, maybe four coats of French polish on there now. And I have one on the front. So the front was done first to protect the top. And you also want to know about the green purflings and the shell that I use. I get my shell from MOP, Mother of Pearl, in Australia. And they're great for shipping stuff out. And you can go online. They have a good presence, MOP.com or something like that. Put in motherofpearl.com or Mother of Pearl Australia, and it'll come up on the Internet, and you can go through their stuff. Now, for the purfling, you can, as I understand, get some from LMI. I was getting it from Girling. I think they've sold their business. They're out in Seattle. But you could check that out as well. And they have all kinds of stuff, and they have a website that, that is pretty good. Now, John, you asked about the humidity. Right now, my humidity is at about 42% down here. And I'm in an area like you where the temperature fluctuates a lot. This is Canada. Uh, today, it could be up to 30 degrees Celsius, which is about 90 Fahrenheit. And, and tomorrow we could have snow. You just, you just never know in this country. So what do I do about the humidity? I have a humidifier on the furnace that I turn on during uh, the, dry, uh, the dry time, which is in the winter, and I put humidity into here. I also have on the floor, right beside the workbench down here, a dehumidifier that I, I run all through the warm weather and through the summer. I'll be taking out a gallon or a gallon and a half of water a day out of that thing. So I work it very carefully and I look at the hydrometer here and I would encourage you to buy a good hydrometer and make sure you're building in and around 40 to 45 if you can. Now, during the summer, you don't want to really build in the summer when it's hot like that. You're better to start up come sometime second week of September and then build through into the spring or the late spring. Those are your best times for controlling humidity. Kurt, you are you're asking if I'm familiar with Martin's new a uh, symmetrical um, body shape and the SC13E guitar. 
Uh, the answer is no. I think Linda Manzer was the first one to do the asymmetrical guitar. I don't know, but uh, it, that just seems to be percolating in the back of my head. But it's a very interesting guitar, and we are going to do another guitar shortly. It's going to be maple, and it will be a cutaway. And I looked at the E13, and that looks very interesting. And what we have here is that on the cutaway, it's cut way back to here and down as opposed to coming to here and down. Now you've seen my cutaways before. If you haven't, go and look at the very first uh, video that I did. It's the Australian Blackwood and it's a beautiful cutaway guitar. I'm going to do another one of those and show you how to do that because it's not that difficult and it looks good and it allows the player to get up in here. Ironically, I don't think very many players actually play up in here. If you're professional, for sure. But other than that, the guys that are sitting at home around the campfire, yeah, maybe they do. I don't, I don't really know. Joseph, uh, have I had any experience in building or, or with the Guild Starfire a four guitar, which is similar to a Gibson E335. The 335, I have a, a friend of mine who wants me to make a 335 in the worst way, and he'll he'll take it from me in, in a heartbeat. Uh, he just is all over that. I've not made an arch top jazz guitar. Now, Mike and Kevin want to know about uh, coming in as students and having me teach, and the answer is. I would if I had the time. Right now, I just don't have the time. Mike also wants to know, this is a really good question. What tools are needed to get started in building the guitar? I'm gonna do a separate video on that, okay? That will not be long, Mike. And I wanna go through my shop and show you the tools that I'm using, the equipment I needed, and what, how it all started for me, and why I got into this in the first place. Now, Tom, you asked, where do I get my tea from? I get my tea, the loose tea, from the Tea House. That's T-H-E, the T-T-E-A, house, H-A-U-S, dot com. The Tea House dot com is located in, I believe it's London, Ontario. And they are fabulous to deal with. They have all kinds of product. They've got East Frisian tea, which I really like. I like the black teas. They've got your orange picos, they got your Earl Grays, they got your English breakfast, they've got your English breakfast decaf, they got you covered, they got Buckingham Palace, they've got all kinds of tea. So go online and check out the teahouse.com. And the people there are so good and so friendly. If you, you know, you can order online, they ship into uh, the United States. Uh, I don't know about other places, but they do ship down there. So Talk to them and give them a call and, and, and see what what is in store for you there. Well, that's it for me on this Tea with Monty episode. And I have my tea. I hope you have your tea. This is just as good as it was when it was made just a few minutes ago, as you saw at the beginning of this segment. Hmm. Thank you so much for joining me. Please subscribe if you haven't already or consider doing so. I'd appreciate that. And by all means, hit the like button and, and the bell so you get notified when I get another bright idea and I want to put up another video. That would be wonderful. And let me hear what you would like. What, what do you want to see on the channel? By the way, I'm getting ready to do the bridge and I looked at my jig, didn't like it. The, the, the shape just... It was out about a sixteenth of an inch, so I have done a new one, and I'm vlogging that. I will put that up and show you how I made that jig. So I think we should have a whole section. Tell me what you think in the, in the comments below. Should we do a whole section and maybe even make a playlist on making jigs for guitar building? Would you like that? If you would, I can take a jig and we'll feature one on each video or maybe two on a video and show you what we, we do with these and how we use them. Anyway, that's it. I promised I was going. I am leaving. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye for now.